Welcome to the Lightbox Programmer Guide. I'm Toby and I design a lot of the light shows that come on the puck. I'm going to show you how to make your own light shows. I'll also show you how to share your creations with other users. But first, I'll show you how to access and download new light shows as we release them over time. In the top right of the Biconix app, after connecting to Lightpuck, you'll see a button with three dots. Click it and select the Lightpuck folder. Inside, you'll find three folders from Dwarven Forge. Default light shows, which is all the light shows that come installed on your device. Light show templates, which will help you make your own light shows. And additional light shows, which is where you'll have access to new programs released periodically throughout the year. Within additional light shows, if you click the light shows thumbnail, it will upload and play that show directly from the cloud. However, it won't permanently save the light show to your device. To upload and store a light show on your puck, click the three dots on the bottom right of the desired light shows thumbnail and select copy to device. It should now be among your default light shows, ready to be sorted. Now, let's show you how to make your own light shows in the Biconix Designer app. We want to start with dragging out some presets that Biconix made available. These are great starting points for anything you're doing. All the light shows that I made start with one or more of these presets, and then I modify them into something new. To access the presets, on the right side of the screen, you'll see a tab for libraries. Click on the Controls folder, and then you'll see subfolders. Go to Adjustable LED Effects, and you'll see a bunch of folder with presets divided into categories. Colors contain presets that simply turn all the LEDs in the puck to one solid color. Chases and Crawl has presets with a swirl or wave that crosses the puck. Eases and Bounces presets will gradually fade into or out of a full light puck effect. Flashes and Gleams are bursts of color that last only a few seconds. Gradients are fading from one color to another color gradually. Holidays are a collection of different holiday-themed color sets. Nature contains some stationary effects that evoke natural phenomena like sunsets. Sparkles are for shimmery effects that have single LEDs on the light puck light up randomly around the puck. I mostly use chases and crawl, sparkles, flashes and gleams, ease and bounces with colors for solid background that the other effects play out on top of. When any of these presets are on a timeline, you can easily extend them. The simple looping crawl 5 seconds preset lasts, as you guessed it, 5 seconds. But by grabbing the white dot on the timeline, you can drag it out for as long as you like, and it'll keep repeating at the same speed. It's also easy to change the directionality of these effects. If you double click a preset on the timeline, it brings up the settings and the properties tab. If you click direction drop down menu, you'll see a handful of options. Circular will make a spiral going inwards, while sequential will make a spiral going outwards. Angular will produce a radar arc effect, and X and Y will move a flat line across each axis. Now let's see how the timeline works. It's pretty simple. When you press play, the bar will move across a preset on the timeline and you'll see the result on the puck overlay. If you grab another preset and put it on the timeline after the first, it will start playing that instead of repeating the first once the bar reaches it. If you leave a break between two light shows, the puck won't display anything during that stretch of time. If you double click on the blank space, you can manually enter how long you want that break to last on the properties tab. Here I'll change this to 1.5 seconds. Now if you want to make more advanced light shows, you'll need to do what we call layering. Click the three dots next to the track timeline and select Add Track. It'll produce another layer, and then you can grab and move layers in any order you want. When you use two tracks at the same time, any LEDs the top track isn't using will be used to display whatever the bottom track is playing. Basically, any blank areas on the preset graphic are unused LEDs. So now you can see, when the top effects stop using an LED, the solid yellow underneath shines through. Now if we put this gradient underneath, we'll have an even wilder effect, since the bottom layer is now making its own swirl that goes between yellow and orange underneath the purple swirl. Now that we understand timeline, we need to cover masking. Masking basically tells the light puck which LEDs will show in a program. We'll use a lightning presets to make a lightning bolt effect. When you double click a program to open the properties tab, the second box has a masking option. Click that to open the masking editor and you'll see a bunch of dots over the light puck image. If you see a white dot, that means the LED is active. If you click mask all, you'll see they all turn orange, which means they're all inactive or masked. Now if you click play, the effect simply won't show up on the light puck at all. To activate specific LEDs, simply click on them one by one to turn them white. We want to make a path that resembles a lightning bolt. Now if you click play, you'll see all active LEDs flash in exactly the shape that we were hoping for. Each bolt of lightning looks different, so we'll want to make a second look as well. 
So let's select the lightning freeze that we just made and click copy, then paste the duplicate onto the timeline. From here, we'll just change the active LEDs to create a new lightning bolt shape. You can either change them all manually or remask the whole puck first, I like what I'm doing right here. Now if we click play, we got the purple swirl and two different flashes of lightning playing over it. Now with the basics out of the way, let's talk about how to use the program settings to modify presets onto more specific effects. We want to use circular crawl preset for this section since it gives us a lot to play with. And it could be a cooler whirlpool than we were making before. While it has a similar wave type and length and a simple looping crawl, you can see that there's more colors here for it to switch between. You can add or remove colors with the plus or minus button, but the most you can have is six. We're going to stick uh, to the six default points here. Let's stretch this out to 10 seconds again, or we can manually lengthen it by typing the length in the properties tab. Also make sure to change the preset name so you can use the buttons later on. Now we'll change the colors by clicking each dot over here. We'll use a couple of different shades of purple and gray to make it look a little more blended. We'll also change the direction to sequential, which looks better as a whirlpool effect. The swirl is going a little bit too fast for my liking, so let's slow it down. Let's go over to the repeat interval slider and raise it a little higher. This means you'll take more time between each start of each swirl, slowing the whole thing down. Wave spacing will increase the gap between waves, leaving more blank LEDs for programs on the lower track to shine through. Spacing randomness is a fun one, but it's a little bit hard to control. The higher it is, the further the effect will deviate from the line it's following. If we turn it all the way up, it looks like complete chaos and doesn't even look like a swirl anymore. We'll try to add a very small amount of randomness to the effect, which makes it look a little bit more natural, but not too much to lose the whirlpool shape. Position M will slide the starting point of the program left to right. You can basically use this to fine tune exactly how you want it to start. In this case, we'll want to position it to start right at the top of the swirl. Brightness is super straightforward. You can affect how intense the lights are. Fade in and fade out will make the beginning and end of the preset gradually light up and disappear. If you have another preset layer beneath, fading will make the top effect look less sudden when it appears. You don't really want to fade when it's just one effect looping itself though. Vary over time and vary over location effect when the light shows will be active. I don't use this very often, but it could be useful when you want to have a strobing effect. The position option here works similarly to the position M above, but you can use them both together to get more variation on your positioning. Ray functions like the repeat interval, but if you click the little arrow here, you can flip the programs to go in the reverse direction. There's also a transition box at the bottom to get some special effects at the beginning or at the end of your presets. For example, you can use bounce to give it a funky little stutter at the start or swing to wave the LEDs back and forth a bit. We're not going to use these for the light show though. That's a run through the entire properties tab. For some of the presets, you might find that the Properties tab has different options or functions slightly differently. We're going to put a gradient at the bottom of the track to set up the next lesson. Now let's talk about buttons and switches. This is the last big tool and is a little bit complicated. It's not just putting a button down. You'll have to modify the layers, timelines, and presets to make it all work the way you want. We're going to do both a button and a switch here. We'll make the button produce a flash of lightning and the switch to change the color of the swirl. You can find the buttons by going to the library tab on the right side and clicking the components folder. Go to inputs, then buttons. You'll have a bunch of different options here. It doesn't really matter which one you use, but it's easier to use images that reflect what you want them to do. So for this, I'll grab the button with the lightning bolt and an on off switch. If we go back to the timeline, you'll see that there's new tracks for both the buttons. Now let's get the timeline ready. We'll want to move the lightning bolts so they aren't over the rest of the presets. Then we'll want to make sure that we have custom names for each preset on the timeline. We'll name the flash of lightnings L1 and L2. Now if we click the track for one of the buttons, we'll see that the property tab looks pretty different. Here you can choose which track they affect. For the button, we only want it to affect track 1 since that's where the lightning is. You can change what the button does with the action tab. We'll want to set its action to random. Then where it says cases, we'll add both L1 and L2. Basically what we've done is given a pool of effects to pull from. Side note, if you want to actually be able to test the buttons, you'll need to go to the components tab and make sure the images of the buttons are in the light puck space and not off to the side. Otherwise, they'll disappear when you go to the timeline workspace. Now when we click the button, you'll see the timeline jumps to one of the lightning flashes randomly and plays it before going back. 
Currently, the Peconics Designer app doesn't quite show the branching correctly. Since all the tracks are on the same timeline here, it looks like you'll stop playing with all the presets when we flash the lightning. However, in practice, since we're only told to do effect track 1, when you're actually using it on the puck, we'll keep playing the presets on track 2 and 3, with the lightning flashing over them. Now we want to set up our switch, which lets us change between two states. In this case, we'll want to change the color of this swirl from purple to green. Sometimes when you use a preset at the start of an input effect, we'll need to make some changes to the preset's properties to make sure it works. In this case, we'll want to make sure that the branching option for both the purple swirl and the red gradient uh, when they end is to loop back to the start of it. So we just select the option that says go to and set the name that we gave to it. Now, we'll copy both these presets and paste them later in the timeline. Then we'll change the colors of the copied swirl to shades of green instead. And we'll also change the red gradient to blue, just for fun. We'll make sure to give them both new names so the program can differentiate between each version. And last but not least, make sure the branching option is to loop on themselves. Now let's select the switch. Give it the round robin action with the two swirls as cases. And make sure it only affects track 2 and 3. Now when we hit the switch, it jumps between one color to the other. If we let a swirl play through to the end, it'll loop back on itself, so that the only way it changes color is with the switch. And at any time, we can hit the button to flash some lightning. Although again, it won't look quite right on the designer app like it will on the puck. So we recommend playing it on the puck at intervals to make sure it's coming along. The last thing we should do is make sure the buttons are on the widget graphic. If you click over the widget tab, you can change the graphic that represents the light show. All we need to do for the functionality here is to make sure both the button and the switch are toggled on in the properties tab. But you can also design your own visual layout for the widget using the options over here. The biggest thing to keep in mind when you're using the designer app is the best way to learn is by doing. Just keep messing around with things, test it out on the puck, and keep making adjustments. We're still learning ourselves, and I'm sure you're going to find great ways to use the light shows that we haven't even thought of. When you design a light show, you can choose to either save it on an existing folder or create a new one. You won't be able to save on any other folders we provided, so you have to make your own personal folder to start. If you'd like to share your light shows, click the menu on the bottom right corner of the folder you want to share and click sharing. Hit the enable sharing button and it will generate a code for you. Simply share that code with anyone with a Beconix account you want to give access to their shows. Because of the way sharing works, we recommend creating one folder for your finished light shows that you can share, and one private folder for things you're working on. To add a shared folder, click the new folder button and select add shared folder. Paste in the share code and gain access to all programs in that folder. A shared folder will have the name and initials of whoever created it, so you can easily recognize it among the list. You also won't be able to edit any of the programs in that folder, although you can copy them into a folder of your own to make adjustments. This is how you can use any of our light show templates to share your own creations. As a creator makes changes to existing programs or add new ones to the folder, it will automatically update on your end as well. Don't forget to use copy to device for any programs that you want to use in your games. That should be enough for you to start making your own light shows. Feel free to share your experiments with us on social media or reach out to us with additional questions you have. Also, check out our Discord, our forums, or Reconix's community to talk to other people using this program. That's all from me. I'm looking forward to seeing all your cool light shows that you make. Goodbye. Yeah.